my name's Stephanie and I teach people about the Okinawan lifestyle. So today I want to talk about nature. Like most indigenous cultures, nature is a huge part of the Okinawan lifestyle. Okinawans still go by the lunar calendar for celebrations and to plan different events. Not only am I a huge nature advocate from my own experience growing up on Okinawa, we were always at the beach. There's just so much centered around that slower island time earth pace. Everyone's kind of chill, relaxed. Nature has huge lessons to teach us in those regards. However, when it comes to early childhood, I'm so passionate about nature because cognitively, it enhances all of your child's senses at the same time. Physically, it offers tons of opportunities for exploratory independent play, playing with boundaries and safety, learning what their bodies are and are not capable of. Creatively, nature is such a wonderful place for your child to use his or her imagination. Oftentimes you'll hear this concept of loose objects as being the best toys. Because for example, if you buy a toy plastic broccoli to put in your child's home kitchen, then that piece of broccoli is only a piece of broccoli, right? Whereas when you're out in nature, rocks and sticks, these items become a vast number of different objects, right? They can become phones, then they're suddenly hammers, then they are parts of a car that they're creating. Lots of different options when it comes to these tools, these loose parts out in nature. But this video is for everybody because the Ermel's method applies whether you're zero or 99, right? And I thought what better time than now to discuss some options for those of you who are either stuck at home, live in an urban jungle, or just don't have the time to get to nature as often as you'd like. In his book, How to Raise a Wild Child, Scott Sampson discusses this idea called a sit spot. In a nutshell, a sit spot is anywhere in your home that's close to a window, close to some type of outside viewing area where you can see the same space over and over. When it comes to early childhood, the beauty of a sit spot is you and your child can take time to look outside the window and notice how today's nature differed from yesterday's. Or if you live in a place like Colorado, how nature differs from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. is gonna be very, very different. We had snow on the ground this morning, now there's nothing, it's a beautiful sunny day. Use this opportunity to look outside and talk about what you see. Are there birds? Are the clouds moving in different ways? Take this early literacy opportunity to journal, write, color, document what they're seeing outside. It's an easy way to make an extension activity out of something very simple. But even if you have a tiny sliver of sky visible to you, I really encourage you to take some time every day to look outside, to maybe open the windows and hear what's going on. And if you live in an urban jungle, maybe even appreciating the chaos of that, or maybe the quiet that you're not hearing right now. Nature has so many benefits that we're still learning so much about. It reduces stress, strengthens your immune system, makes you happier. I hope this inspires you to find a little bit of nature in your life, even if it's a house plant, especially if it's a house plant. Any green thumb will tell you that whatever energy and love you're giving to a plant, it soaks up and uses to grow. The same goes for your children, so why not do both at the same time? I wouldn't be too discouraged if you don't have much nature available to you right now. Just remember that this is a temporary period and maybe this time of looking at nature outside rather than experiencing it will inspire you to spend more time outside when you are able to do that. 